this morning. Welcome him into your hearts and into your spirit today. We are nothing if we don't have the Holy Spirit this morning. Holy Spirit, visit with us. Meet with us. We desire more of your presence, Jesus. We desire more of you, Lord. Every day of our lives, Jesus. We need more of your Holy Spirit. Dwell with us today, God. Dwell with us today. Dwell with us, God. We are waiting for you. Today, God. Oh, 
morning, Jesus, with your presence, with your power, with your Holy Spirit, God. We want you and we need you today, God. Visit our lives today as we worship you. Visit our homes as we worship you. Visit Trinidad and Tobago, oh God, as we worship your name today, Lord. As we lift the name of Jesus on high, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He alone is worthy to be praised, worthy to be magnified. Glory to your name. Spirit just touches our hearts and our lives and our homes. May you 
this morning, all through the fullness of God. Let His Holy Spirit minister to you that you overflow with joy and healing in your bodies, in your mind, in your spirit today. We thank Him for His presence. We thank God. We thank Him for sending the Holy Spirit. God bless you this morning. May you run over with His presence. God bless you.
miracles, releases the blessing, but it requirements the Holy Spirit requires holiness and righteousness for us among the people of God and salvation and serving God with all sincerity. It will be a commitment today that every believer who may not be living the way that you want us to live. But he said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, you will hear from heaven and you will heal our land. So repentance is a prerequisite. Humility, obedience, coupled with expectation. That even right now in the homes and in the cars, wherever they are, all over this world, that is looking at this program right now, as they desire for that Pentecost experience, I ask you, God, and the leadership and the membership of Redemption Worship Center, that I'm given oversight over. That I'm given responsibility over. That we cry out and we pray for the old and the middle aged and the young in this life that we will experience God in a way that we have never experienced before. So the world will find hope in the church. And I bless you. Give God praise. Don't be ashamed in your home, wherever you are. Oh, just give Him praise. There is a move of the Spirit that is taking place right now in your home, in your environment, in your place where you are settled up. In this house, there is a move of the Holy Ghost because God is about to release His word and His promise. When you come, you don't want to see individual believers and individual church. You want to see your church, your people, your flock, your house. In Jesus. 
Jesus' name. Amen. How does your family's worship team? I want to believe God that in the midst of this lockdown, lockdown means that the church is restricted to five persons to come in and pray and assemble and do so, any service. And gatherings all over are restricted. But I want to pray in the midst of of this locking us in or locking us out would be an opportunity for God to come into the, the lives of the believer and the church in an awesome way. I pray today when I finish here the word, I will ask Crystal to come and pray that Pentecost release <coughs> upon the body of Christ and as a church redemption worship center I, I was praying and said Lord where what are you doing with us what are you doing with the body of Christ what are you doing with the church and you know my Lord what is amazing God actually started to speak to me last night I hear, I hear from God <laughs> and he said 2020 and 2021, early 2021, started, we want to start it from now. We would be start preparing to celebrate 30 years as a church. 30 faithful years that God has been towards us. And the team that I, the Lord already gave up in my heart to set is a time a visitation from God. So I want to say to all our Redemption Worship Center members and all our <coughs> visiting friends on social media that this is a time for a visitation that we are saying, declaring before God that He laid upon my heart. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, 13 to 15. And this is where the genesis of the burden of the church would have taken place as a Pentecostal movement. And we call it Pentecost because we relate it to the upper room experience on the day of Pentecost. So when people ask you, what religion? I'm, I'm a Christian, but I'm a Pentecostal. When you say Pentecostal, it identify you as a born again of the Holy Spirit believer. <laughs> and it says they were instructed by Jesus to go to that upper room and wait there he said last week those of you who think that the church is irrelevant that it's not important for us to assemble I, I got, I've got news for you God told the disciples go together the 120 went to that upper room where abode both Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, and Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, Zealot, and Judas, and the brother of James. And it says in verses 14, that all these continued with one accord. And I want you to see, listen, I, I am pray and I know Redemption Worship Center is a very united church. I wish the body of Christ and the whole could be united as a body of the Christ. And it says, and they all continued in one accord in prayer and supplication. So you ask, why do we come into the house of God with a unified approach? So that we could pray and supplication with thanksgiving that it will be made known unto God. So anybody that's saying that we can have a home church, sorry for you, that's your church. But that, you know, you need to have a family devotion. But don't allow your family devotion to replace God's ecclesia called on coming together in the house. And the Bible said, and with the woman Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, 
and then he went on and he gave that declaration um, that he placed from Joel a promise that will come to them. And the number of name persons to gather there were 120. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, <clears throat> that's not long after. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with what? One accord in one place. And I want you all to understand that. Because the, the believers and the people who push them back from, let me see, any government, any organization, any believer, and I keep saying this, that does not have a burning desire and a push forward to have the church open so that we can come together with a corporate anointing, does not have the kingdom of God at heart. And it says when they were in one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came the sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and it says Malon and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave unto us we needed that Pentecost experience for us. In 1904, <clears throat> under the leadership of Evans Roberts, you would have, those of you who study church history, you realized that the Welsh revival took place under a young 26 year old minister in training. The revival lasted less than a year, but in that period, a hundred thousand converts were made, which began with an effort to kindle non-denominational non and non-sectarian spiritually, kindle that fire. So not only souls were won, but the church at that point in time, the fire of God was in kindle upon their life. So in 1904-1905, they had that Welsh revival. You know what is amazing? As I read further down, you realize that God doesn't look for people. Not that you don't like, you don't appreciate the titles. But sometimes we think if we carry the name apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, doctor, <coughs> bishop, if you carry all these titles, you have ranks in heaven. When you study carefully revival, you'll realize that God will use sometimes the people outside of that, what you call, set structure. Because whenever a revival breaks forth, let me just say this, whenever the Holy Ghost begins to release the Pentecostal experience, the traditional Pentecostal church, and I'm saying this, there's some Pentecostal or oh, oh, full gospel churches that are so traditional, the day there is a breakout of the move of God, they started to ask the question, is this really of God? Is this not of God? The manifestation seems to be strange. How? Oh, I don't think it could be a revival because no, that, that is just Mary, that is just Jane, that is just Keith Rabbit, that's that. That is just, you see, God don't see people title. He sees the heart of the individual with a burning desire to see something change and on top of that there must be a desire to see beyond you and your local church you must begin to see the body of Christ and so the Welsh revival and then in California that was 1904-1905 but in April 1906 that it had what you call the Azusa Street Revival and on that, at the night of April the 9th, 1906, William Seymour, a, blind, a man blind in one eye, came out from a slave background of his parents. One that did not fill all the criterias 
what you will call modern day Pentecostal for God to use. And I thank God for Bible school. I thank God for all these titles. I thank God for all these offices. But when God sees the kingdom, God sees every individual while man look at ranks and position and order and titles. Listen, you can have all the titles, but if you don't have that Pentecost experience, the title will mean, will mean nothing to us. And William Seymour with seven men. Marlon, some people think, and Crystal, some people think that you need a million people for a revival. Some people think revival wouldn't happen without everybody there. But with seven men who were waiting on God in Bunny Bray, Bunny Bray Street, that's in California, when suddenly as though hit by a bolt of lightning, they were knocked from their chairs to the floor and the other seven men, men began to speak in tongues and shout out loud praise in God. The news spread quickly. The city was stirred. Crowds started to gather. And in a few days later, Seymour himself received the Holy Spirit. The service moved from inside of the building, I could see the few hundred, to outside where they could accommodate the big crowds that was coming from all around. that Pentecost experience at Azusa Street. So people, when they approached and they came forward, they fell under the, the power of Almighty God as they approached. They were baptized with the Holy Ghost and the sick were healed and the sinners received salvation. Let me just say this, the Pentecost experience leave you with testimonies after testimonies renewal of lives and hearts after renewal of lives and hearts today more than 500 million Pentecostal and charismatic believers around the globe were impacted because of that and it is the fastest growing form of Christianity today so the Azusa Street Revival is commonly regarded as the beginning of the modern day Pentecostal movement. Akina, I want in my time to see God visit us. I don't know, somebody needs to believe God for that. Yeah. <clears throat> One eye, black guy, didn't fit all the bill. God used Evans Roberts, a young man use another person in January 1994 in Toronto Canada there's a church they call the Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship it was renamed from it was first the Toronto Airport Vineyard Church TV in 1994 and a revival broke out there it was known as the Toronto Blessing began and Pastor John and Carol Arnott. Out of that <coughs> revival, people from all over the world, when I read the history, I followed them. I was around and didn't go to it, but, but read about it. From all Japan and Korea, Korea and China, all over the world, will run to that place because God was doing something in the lives of believers and most people went in there came out with a miracle um, with a renewal with strength and courage and out of that we all hear about the Bethel church in Redding, California you all know that I read my the, the worship has always been a key to that ministry let me just say this worship is a key to any revival that's why I'm so tough on our worshipers and musicians. And I say to them, and I'm telling them, some of them, I mean, they're locked away home for a while. But I pray that you're praying, you're worshiping, and you're living holy for God. And so the Bethel Church, one year after Pastor Bill Johnson, 
a pastor in Redding, California, visited that place, the Toronto Vineyard. And he took over the senior pastor of Bethel Church in Redding, California. And it has become known as a place of supernatural healing, impartation, and ministry training as a result of what occurred in Toronto. People all over the world visit for that experience. You know what I pray? I'm not selfish. But I pray to God that not just only redemption we should send them. Because there are pastors all over Trinidad and all over the world. And this is what my honest feeling is. That when times past, God used one and two key leaders and church to go to revival. But I have a gut feeling that revival will break out in churches all over the nation. All over the world. And listen to those of you who traditionally strong Pentecostal who think that you're the only legitimate body with the authority for revival. God will raise up all these little churches and pastors who nobody knows about, who seek in God. I remember I was at a, under the PWI, we had it, it was a general conference at TJ's Hotel and I think it was the Vice President of uh, Assemblies of God came and spoke at <clears throat> that Howie conference. And he said to all of us at that time in that conference, he said, you all criticize the Presbyterians and the Methodists and criticize all these organizations that you said they talked about the Holy Ghost and now they become traditional and and we have to guard against because the church could start operating like the paper scene. The, 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 the Roman Catholic Church, <laughs> everything is ruled from the Pope coming down and nobody seemed to have to hear from God for themselves. And he said to us as a church at that convent conference, he said, God, that you will become like these churches that once had the fire, but now become traditional with rules, regulations, structures, and order. And all these ordinances that you put that, that even God can get in the word. And then you have soon after that the 94, 95, and in 96, the Brownsville revival took place in Malo. Also known as the Pensacola outpouring, which was widely reported in terms of as a Christian revival which in the Pentecostal movement, it was voted on Father's Day, June the 18th, 1995, at the Brownsville Assembly of God Church in Pensacola, Florida. Two years before that, which is in 93, Pastor John Kilspatrick began directing by his congregation. Let us pray for a revival. And for two years, they have been praying for that revival until that one day God releases an anointing in that church where over 2.5 million people visited that church during that time of its revival. They had what you call a Monday prayer and a Tuesday, true Thursday, true Saturday, sorry, evening revival service. Seven days. Service. We have people struggling to come to church for one day. And if I tell some of these leaders and musicians and members, we are going to have a revival and I need you to come every service every day, they will say, What? But they're going to work every day for Caesar. I know some of them pass it off. But I'm telling you something. At that Bronzer revival, they had what you call the old time singing. Music was heard with people with a loud, <coughs> loud worship old-fashioned sermon on sin and salvation and after this sermon well, over hundreds that time hundreds of thousands accepted the invitation to leave the chair and run forward to the altar we need a revival come on I don't know about somebody listen you may say I'm comfortable in my home we need a revival we need a revival the only thing that to save the world from the destructive force, from the coronavirus, from the devil, 
from what you call that second wave, some people looking at the cup, not just the pandemic that we have now, but the pandemics to come that will continue to cause economic decline with things like famine added to that with nations who are threatening war like North Korea, China, Russia, and the USA. A revival is long in the waiting because without a revival church, we will stand as victims and not as victors. You see, I said it in the early part of my opening that God could use the most insignificant person with no great name and position and title to put a revival. You see, Pastor Hall, when you look at some of the big moves, D.L. Moody, <clears throat> a young man grew up. He sold shoes in his uncle's place. <clears throat> The highest level <coughs> Akina he reached was a Sunday school teacher. Some people think you had to be a pastor, you had to be an apostle. No, he was a Sunday school teacher. And here it was, and as a young man, just a Sunday school teacher, God was able to build a revival in him when he went to a Sunday school teacher's conference. Young man didn't have the credential that everybody thought he should have. Then you have John G. Lee, a businessman, young businessman in real estate and insurance. God used him for the great revival in South Africa during that pandemic. And then you have Smith Wigglesworth. He was just a plumber man. Plumbers there is hope. Electrician there is hope. And God used him to even raise the dead. All type of healing would have taken place. Oral Roberts, a young man who just came out of uh, college with a degree, went straight into evangelism. God used him for that healing revival. I want to say to all of us, everybody that's listening, God could use you. And maybe the, God is speaking to you right now. As a young pastor, young teachers are working in the church. God could use you. You see, when the Pentecost virgin and experience start to take place, the Holy Spirit will give us an identity. Crystal, that I will stand out different from the world because the Holy Spirit gives me that identity. And that is why Romans 8 16 it says, The Spirit itself bear witness, bear it witness with our spirits that we are children of Almighty God. I have an identity when I receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. People will recognize that you are a child of his. And when they recognize that, you will also be persecuted for being a child of God. That baptism experience, that the Holy Ghost will give us the power to appropriate the promise from God and connect us to the kingdom. Tradition can. Prayer can't. Just pray dead prayer can Prayers can But the baptism of the Holy Spirit now makes you that when you are identified as a child of God, the devil will begin to respect you. People will begin to honor you. You will be attacked from many directions. But guess what happened? That if the Lord is on your side, just know everything is going to be all right. Now that I have my identity, and the Holy Spirit gives me the power to appropriate. I don't have to ask people. I don't have to beg. I can begin to appropriate what God promised in my life. And not only that, I am connected to a spiritual kingdom. A spiritual kingdom. That is more powerful than the physical kingdom. Because everything that happens in the natural is first as a result of what takes place in the spiritual realm. <laughs> Romans 8, 17. 
and his children, their heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. I don't know about you, but I have a promise to my inheritance. I have something from God that the Holy Spirit gives me the power to appropriate. The Holy Spirit releases a great grace upon your life. That grace upon your life, things you don't even ask God for, God just begins to release it. A measure of favor. Things you don't even know, but you need to pray for God begin to work it in your life. You know, Diane is my own one daughter, I'm only daughter, and I have two sons. And sometimes people think I favor her, and she thinks so too. That she is more favorite than maybe because they see it's like your child and they're born and not say the same thing And you know the thing about it, anything all my three children will ask me for. I will do it for them. But some of them don't ask. But Diane asks them, Daddy, I need this. I need to get that. And but because she's always in the face, hope she get married soon to get out of the face a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes things she didn't ask for. I will see the need and I will go and do it. She's a biological daughter. How much more when we are born again by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that Spirit of God will release the grace upon our life to give us what we don't deserve and release what God desires for us so that we can have it by faith. I love the word because 2 Corinthians 9 8 it says and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that he always have in what all sufficiency in all things <clears throat> may abound to every good work man what if you didn't get nothing out of this message today you need to get this because we all need that grace because the impact of the Holy Spirit baptism upon our life, it will leave the Spirit of God to still continue to do the creative work in our life. And if God can say the Spirit of God moved upon the earth and upon the sea, and God said, let there be, I believe that in our physical bodies, in our lives, in our home, that supernatural miracles come on somebody, need to bear with this with me, supernatural miracles could take, still take place, as he was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I am the God of all things. The Bible said all things are possible. He is not only a God with creative power, but he's a God with convicting power. That you may be hearing and you don't know Jesus Christ, but by the power of the Holy Ghost, you will feel the conviction presence. So the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Pentecost experience will bring a sense of conviction upon Trinidad, upon the male, upon the world, so that people will be drawn to Jesus. The Holy Spirit, baptism, and Pentecost experience has the powers, John 3, 5 says, to regenerate us. It means that which was broken up, that which was out of order, that which what was not in shape like God wanted us to be. He can regenerate us. Not only that, but that spirit of God is a spirit of revelation. The secret things of God, he will make known unto man. I don't know about you, but we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost now more than ever because the world is in darkness and the light of God will shine in our hearts. The Holy Spirit, that Pentecost experience, is a spirit of intercession. When you're going through thing in your life and you don't know what to pray for, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, when you sit there still and your mouth ain't moving but your heart searching, God begin to speak and intercede on your behalf. The baptism of the Holy Ghost has what you call the power to sanctify you. So though the devil may try to condemn you and make you feel worthless when he sanctifies you, 
He qualifies you for what He wants you to have. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a spirit, and the Pentecost experience is a spirit of demonstration of the power of God. I pray today that every believer will seek the Pentecost experience, not the measure of the Spirit that they get saved with, but the overflow of the anointing that they can live with. And as the worshipers come, and we pray that God will release the anointing upon his people and upon his church. You need to be filled or baptized in the Holy Ghost. You need to walk in the Spirit. The Bible said in Galatians 5, 16, walk in the Spirit and he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Christian, if you have to make it in these closing days, you have to guard your mind, guard your body against all these um, temptation that is coming your way. Sex outside of marriage. You young people who take your good wait to get married 10 years, but you want to have sex all the 10 years, then that God will convict you. You want to gamble, you want to smoke, you want to lie, you want to live in the world. God will bring you to the place where He will guard your mind, guard your body. Trust the Lord. So you will not only be filled with the Spirit, you will not only walk in the Spirit, but you will be led by the Spirit. It means that your life will, life will be guided convicted about where you should go and how you should go in Luke chapter 4 verses 1 and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan the valley in the Bible said he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness Galatians 5 18 it says if you be led by the Spirit of the Spirit you are the sons of God you are not under the law but you are under grace you will be empowered by the Spirit. You will be sealed by the Spirit. The Bible said the Holy Spirit will bring a sealing upon your life. Not just give you a sense of identification, but it gives you a sense of protection. That's, that's how I feel. And in Acts chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, it is said, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father had put in his own power, but you shall receive the receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I pray this night, this day, sorry, this night wherever you are in South Africa that the Holy Spirit will instruct you and direct you that you are prepared to come out your comfort zone. You know it's a comfort zone? It's where you fix and plant yourself, not even God can come and move you. Because this is how you want, this is what you want. I'm prepared to come out of the comfort zone we are and in and ready for 2021 and 22. The Holy Spirit will instruct the purpose. What I do is a place where I do what I do for God and what time do I do what I need to do for God. Oh Jesus, we pray all over this place in your home in your car, wherever you are. Let's come to that place and begin to believe God. To the baptism of the Holy Ghost. To fall in this house redemption worship center. To fall pastors that are looking to fall in your church wherever you are. We are praying that a move of God will take place upon the nation. The Bible said here in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, into the uttermost part of the earth, in the Caribbean, Pardon me, in America, all over the world. A move of the Spirit. So when the government seems to have no respect for the church and say what should happen, I say to, to the Jesus, God, turn up and turn on your presence. Even 
the politicians will know they have to run to the church. The businessmen will know they have to run to the church. The corporate person who work in a corporate society will run to the church. The civil servant will run to the church. Not everybody will go to supermarkets and all over the place, but the church seems to be an issue. And I, I said to you, the church is a blessing. The house of God is the reservoir of God where he pours in anointing and it overflows. I pray right now there be an overflow. As we sing this one worship song, they will sing. Crystal is going to come and pray. Pray for that release. That release upon this place. Come on. All over this place. In your home. You know you're running cold. When you don't come to church for a little bit, it's easy to run warm, lukewarm, and cold. But I pray that the fire of God, just as it did in, in the Brownsville revival, and the Toronto Blessing revival, Oh God and the Azusa Street Revival and the Welsh Revival and Lord I pray the revival on Pentecost I pray let there be a revival a revival now yes, just listen as we sing that song Father listen to our prayers today God Father listen to our
that people will be filled with the Holy Ghost. That when they come back to their churches, God, that church redemption worship center for the church under my watch will be on fire and a manifestation of God yes, will take place. Let's lift our hands and begin to receive it as crystal prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, just lift it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Get his attention right now. Father, we honor you, God. We praise you, we glorify you, we magnify you, oh God. We give you everything, dear God, that you deserve, Lord God. Father, we acknowledge you as Lord, the only true and living God, Jesus Christ. We lift you up, we place you above everything and everything else this morning, God. Father, we bow before you, oh God, Father. Father, we prepare for this Pentecost and this revival, Lord Jesus. Father, we surrender everything to you, God, Father. If there's anything within us, dear God, that is not of you, dear God, anything that's going to hinder, dear God, what you're going to do in this season, that is going to keep us back from it, dear God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you remove it, dear God, Father. Father, we repent, dear God, for every wrong thing we have listened to, every wrong thing we have done, every wrong thing we have looked at, dear God, every wrong thing we have prepared and put ourselves in place, dear God. But Father, I pray that you remove that is not like you in our lives, dear God. Anything that has been hindering us from spending that time with you, dear God. Father, I pray, dear God, remove fear, remove sickness, remove doubt, remove worry, remove everything, dear God, that is taking us away from you, dear God. And prepare our minds, prepare our hearts, dear God. And Father, I pray that you will just cleanse us right now, purify us, dear God. We repent right now.
now we just want to thank you for viewing and join with us. We pray that God will bless you and join us again on Sunday at 9 a.m.